yes, they did it. It's so good to see a company that hears the feedback from the user, like you and me, and then changes the design to meet the need and the requests of the user. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Blade Review. Today we're talking about SOG. SOG has heard not only what I shared, but I know many other people said about the original Terminus XR, which I reviewed about two years ago, and it had the basis for a really good knife, but there were a few details that were kinda you know, making it lag, mainly the pocket clip and the finger flipper. Uh, there were some aspects to it that we're going to dive into today that I just was not pumped about, uh, and it kind of made it lag a little bit in desirability. Well, they have changed some of that, modified it with this model and version. This is the SOG Terminus XR LTE. I know, a huge mouthful. They had to put the whole thing right here <laughs> on the blade. We've got like a whole like manual right there. would be nice to have that dialed back a little bit in the update. Um, but other than that, they've tweaked some things here that we're going to look at and dive into today uh, and break down not only what this newest version of the SOG Terminus has going on, but also how does that transition throughout the line. We're going to discuss all of that today in this video. But before I do that, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is LA Police Gear. They hooked me up with this blade so I could test it, review it, give you guys data on how they've tweaked this aspect and design to help you guys better understand what's available and whether or not it might be something to worth throw in your to throw in your rotation but i'm super glad that la police gear is a regular sponsor here at this channel because not only do they carry awesome brands like sog or leatherman and you know solomon and uh, streamlight just to name a few but they also have their really good established own brand of la police gear uh, apparel as well as equipment and you guys get the opportunity as viewers here to have an awesome promo code for 10% off your purchase and so I just encourage you guys go check out LA Police Gear today if this knife or other gear items in general you're in the market for are connecting with you you can use that promo code and link in the description box below and it'll save you guys money and also get hooked up through a really good distributor that I've bought gear through for a long time and been very pleased with the results I know you guys will too. And so with that, let's go ahead and see what this new SOG has going on, what the update is, and whether or not it's worth throwing in your rotation. All righty, let's go ahead and hit it. Uh, I will run in, you know, some B-roll and, you know, using this, I've actually had quite a bit of use with this. I've had several months of regular EDCing this model uh, now, so it's been working great, the quality control, um, everything, you know, uh, and we'll touch on that as well as you know, some competitive options here in just a moment, but I want to touch on the two things that have been changed with this design, the LTE particularly. Uh, and that is right here, the first, the thumb ramp right there for the flipper. In the original model that I had, that was very sharp jimping, like the sharpest I'd seen, not comfortable to use. And when you use the flipper, it was a it was a hot spot. It was a point of contention for me. Um, you could have probably taken it to like some heavy grit sandpaper and worked on it for maybe 20 minutes and gotten it to where it should have been from the factory. But I just wasn't pleased with that. The thumb studs have always been good. Uh, didn't have any issue with that. And they're very easy to purchase. So if you like those, totally good you know if you like doing thumb studs more than flippers but um that was a point of contention they have completely machined that properly it is very comfortable now it's rounded it is not sharp they've dialed back that jimping it is excellent the way it should have been from the factory originally excellent amount exactly what you want to give you just a little bit of grip but nothing overkill to cause a problem or a hot spot so the next bit is this pocket clip guys the original one i was just not pumped about it was very big it had sog you know like laser cut out in it i mean it did its job it was loop over it had good tension on it but man it was just like this huge branding piece it was kind of uh, uh, obnoxious it was kind of created a hot spot and it just wasn't um, what you would hope for, particularly at the level of pricing and, you know, that type of stuff. It, it just wasn't needed. It made it feel like a cheap knife, you know. Um, and so this is perfect. Very streamlined, good tension, doesn't create any hot spots, loop over. It's completely ambidextrous. You unscrew it, swap it over. Uh, I mean, it is everything that you want and look for in a good lightweight pocket knife. It's not obnoxious in any way, grayed out. Uh, just super cool on this particular one. I mean, it, that is what you need and want in a pocket clip, guys. And they, they updated that. So, I mean, that is fantastic that they have done those two things alone. Take it from being like, yeah, it's a pretty good knife to, yeah, now it's like a really good knife. And there's nothing to really complain about. Um, the designing itself, 
the blade works really well. It's a great slicer. I was very happy with the slicing capability of it. You're looking at like 2.75 cutting edge, about just under three overall blade length. Um, very high grind, so I mean, that's very good. And it's just got a big, broad blade drop point with that little bit of a swedge. Uh, lots of color combinations, not only in the handles, if you go with certain models, uh, but also in uh, this particular LTE, you can get them with kind of a, a coppery mustard color as well. I almost went with that, and last minute I was like, you know what, I'm going to go with more of the standard you know, gray and black version that you see here in front of you. But So th there's a cool aspect that you can't always get with a lot of other pocket knives if you're just wanting something a little bit more different and unique. But man, it, it performs great for general utility, EDC, everyday carry type of task that you're going to do does everything that you would want and it's got s35 vn steel rockwell 60 to 62 with this particular model so i mean that's very very good i've never i have not seen any issues with a couple um, of that steel from sog as we move on to the handle really fizz fills out the hand well feels good in the hand good little jimping right there grabs it i have large size hands so i'm going to fill out my hand and it doesn't feel like a three finger knife or anything like that. Now, um, it doesn't feel sharp on any of my grip. There is a sharp transition inside the handle here with the layered uh, carbon fiber. And so that's what makes it this LTE. So this has, and it's really interesting. I don't know how I feel about it uh, in the sense of, I don't know why they didn't just do it with one piece of carbon fiber, but basically what they did was do a piece of carbon fiber, then inlaid it on another piece of carbon fiber that was then machined to bring it down to 2.3 ounces. So, I mean, it's a very, 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 very light knife. So that is really cool. If you're into digging, you know, getting down to the very lightest you can absolutely do, that is absolutely gonna have it. It still holds all of its tension um, and rigidity. You know, it's not, it doesn't feel flimsy or weak, but it is very light. Uh, so that's something to consider. And that interior liner, it does have an abrupt um, transition. So it doesn't feel sharp when I grip it, but that's just something like when you run your nail, you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of that's kind of sharp in there. So uh, you feel it if you are looking for it right in there. But when you grip it and use it, I don't notice anything. It feels exactly the way the original one did, uh, and contours well to the hand flow through construction. But it is cool again just to see that. Let's show you right in there. If I can flip it there, maybe the milling milling out of carbon fiber i mean that's wild if you're if you're milling out carbon fiber you're trying to get down to the very very last ounce um so that that's pretty crazy pretty cool and then you got your xr um lock xr it's a pirate lock xr lock right there you know you got your post boom drops it out of the way on ball bearings they are a little noisy compared to some other models that i own super smooth buttery buttery smooth but you can kind of hear it a little bit just rattles let's see if you can hear that and I have heard that from other people as well. Um, so it's not something that uh, I was like, oh, I don't like that, but it's just something to be aware of is that it's got, see when you deploy it, it sounds fine, but if you kind of like let it float there, let's see if we can float it there. You know, you just hear the, you just hear the ball bearings rolling around in there a little bit more. Um, and that's probably just the tolerances um, or maybe the amount of ball bearings that are in there in the pivot. So, but totally ambidextrous with that lock. It totally does an awesome job, and I love that style of lock. It's a really fun blade to play with. You, know, you can snap it back into place. Blade's buried there in the handle and everything with that. So there is the tool itself. Uh, I think in this variation, it is phenomenal. Now we'll talk competitive options pricing again. $140, again, with the promo code that we have to over to LA Police Gear. You can get it. Um, it's going to end up being about 14 bucks off, if I remember correctly, um, is what you will get. So that's going to be like one of the lowest pricing points for all the different, you know, think 10% less. Um, than what's on the market and what you're going to find on most other websites. So that's pretty sweet that LA Police Gear is hooking um, you guys, the viewers, up with that and has that available in the description. So at 140 for this model, then there is the G10 and carbon fiber version with S35VN. That guy is going to be about 80 before the promo code, 10% um, off. And then there is the about $50 just G10 with stainless steel D2 version. Now, folks, just for clarification's sake, today we are looking at the LTE version and with the dial down jumping and the pocket clip is on that model across their uh, line. But I am seeing some of the cheaper D2 steel with G10 or the G10 carbon fiber with S35EN versions. I'm seeing some that do have this dial down jimping and the thinned out pocket clip, but I'm also seeing some that do not and still have that old heavy jimp and kind of crazy pocket clip. 
Uh, so just kind of keep that in consideration as you are looking through the models. What do you need? Maybe what are you over to, willing to overlook depending on price to value? Uh, and we'll hit all that here momentarily. But I just wanted to clarify all of that so you don't go out and buy a particular version expecting dial down jimping in this thinned out pocket clip and it shows up with the heavy jimp and crazy pocket clip. Um, so just know the version you're purchasing um, and what you are expecting out of the two pieces uh, before it arrives. Some of them, I mean, the cheap version is coming in about 50 bucks. A D2 version of the Rat Model 2 with just basic liner lock. I mean, that thing comes in at about you know $45, which is right around that same price point. Uh, so I think the the what you're getting in each version is you're getting a lot of bang for buck. Just to give you some perspective, here's Steel Liners G10 D2 steel made uh, made in China. You know, like the the um, Terminus XR. The um, this guy's about 80 bucks. You know, so I mean, very thick, robust. It's a, a heavier, you know, more like quote unquote tactical knife, the SogTac XR. Um, but just to give you perspective, D2, and I think for 80 bucks, you are getting quite a heck of a knife with that. So you can get this, but much lighter with S35VN for that same price point. So that's pretty sweet. Then you have here uh, the Spyderco Tenacious S35VN, uh, $98. You know, um, not going to be as light as this guy and uh, has the S35VN. So um, you can, for a little bit cheaper, get the SOG version that is available. So something to think about and it'll have, you know, that cool XR lock and have flipper and thumb studs and things to think about with that. And then as again, just as I had said earlier, you know, a D2 version of the Rat Model 2 is gonna be the same cost as just about as the D2 version of the Terminus XR. So uh, that's pretty cool that you can get this SOG. And I think SOG has really done well. And especially if they completely transition over the line on all versions with this pocket clip and dial down jimp, that is one of the best, I think, deals, depending on the pricing and whatever type of steel you want, versions of, of a pocket knife that you can get your hands on with a lot of really cool features for a great EDC tool. So that's my mileage, folks. Good job just giving the good feedback, um, you know, of what we like to see. Uh, from the knife community and you know kudos to SOG for their willingness to hear that and then transition designs and tweak designs to really fit what the user you and me look for and so um, pretty awesome stuff but I look forward to hearing your guys comments your thoughts on this design these tweaks and uh, where it's punching the ticket for you and really making it go like yeah I need that um, or maybe not, you know, what are other designs that are maybe competitive for you? I always love hearing the comments below. Uh, I encourage you to subscribe uh, and check out the other video popping up as well as follow us on Instagram and social media so you can see what us what is up and coming and projects I'm working on. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.